What's up, gangsters? How about 10 minutes of random? Okay, maybe 15 or 20. You know how it goes. Okay, so here we go. This actually is not going to be random at all. It is going to be very focused and very specific and about the Ming 148th scale Super Hornet that I've been working on for a while now. Um, in fact, this might even be really short. Might actually make it in under the 10 minute window. <laughs> um, I didn't even want to do this because uh, I'm honestly just kind of tired, but uh, I feel like this is uh, this one is, is sort of worth doing for the greater good. Not so much as a warning to other would-be Ming 48 scale Hornet builders, but more as a, uh, yeah, just don't do what I do. Don't do what I did. Don't be dumb. Don't be me. Don't be that guy. <laughs> anyway, so here's, here's the deal. Here's what happened. So, as you can see from this picture, this is a picture I should have paid a lot more attention to for reasons that will become clear momentarily. You can see right there is a little gizmo. That is the ANSQ-228. Hopefully I got that right. It's also called the ATFLIR, Advanced Tactical or, adv or Advanced Targeting Forward-Looking Infrared. That's that uh, infrared camera gizmo that all those UFO videos were shot with. So, it is a thing on most Super Hornets, and it's over there on the left hand hip station. I love that term, it's just fun to say. I'll probably say it a whole bunch in this little video, uh, even though it's only 10 minutes. But with the stations on a Hornet, and I just learned this myself, um, starting over here on the uh, port side, the, uh, the uh, weapons stations start over here at number one, Two, three, four, five is the port side hip station. Six is the center line station. And then seven is the uh, starboard hip. And then eight, nine, 10, 11 stations total. Anyhow, um, what I plan on doing is uh, doing what they call goofy gas, where you've got a gas can hanging on the center line and then one over on the uh, over on the, the starboard side. Uh, it, it, they don't tend to put gas cans on the same side as the ATFLIR because it obstructs its view too much. Anyhow, so that's all a bunch of Hornet trivia that I've been learning. And so here's what happened. I went to assemble the ATFLIR uh, and its little pylon because I was working on ordnance and stuff. So. Here it is, this is the actual thing. Um, and you can see that it's uh, got this clear part that's the actual camera head. And also, uh, good news for the lazy, like me, is the lens is typically turned backwards into the stowed position when it's uh, on the ground. So you can't see it, and even though Ming gives you a clear part so that you can paint the lens uh, or the inside of the camera, uh, that inside of that clear part to, so the lens looks right, like it's kind of green and greenish blue. You don't have to, because again, stowed and not visible. Anyhow, that thing goes on this little pylon right here, okay? It's a fairing kind of deal that sits there on that uh, hip station. See there, I found another reason to do that. We're gonna make that a drinking game. Every time I say hip station, you have to uh, drink some Tamiya extra thin. Anyway, so when you go over to the instructions, all right, let's see if we can find it uh, here. Here it is, okay. All right, so there you can see the ANASQ228. They tell you to, uh, uh, to uh, see here's, here's where you assemble it. Okay, pretty straightforward. And you can see in that picture, um, <coughs> well, <coughs> excuse me, you really can't see <coughs> inside of part F9, the fairing there, okay? And when you look at that one, you know, it's sort of like, okay, just put it here, right? Yeah, somewhere over there on that side. Now on this one, they <laughs> kind of give you 
a little bit of a clue. Again, something I should have been paying much more attention to because see how they point to that notch right there? Not really clear what they're pointing to it from. Well, <coughs> yeah, <coughs> here's why that's important. Because the thing that they're pointing from is this little dealio right here. See that little tab sticking out inside there? Little being the operative word, okay? Because the deal is that that tab is supposed to mate with the forward of the two notches that you see right here. Okay, now I realize I'm gonna have to take this tape off of here for this to be visible to you guys. Um, anyway, so you can see, yeah, I'll explain why the tape is on there here in just a second. So with the tape out of the way, all right, you can see there's two notches, rear and a front, okay? Now, here's the deal. The way that this is supposed to go on there is just like this, where that little notch or that little tab engages with that notch, and you can feel that that fairing piece will not slide front to back when it's properly located. And when you put it on there like that, it fits pretty good, right? Not bad at all. Okay, you can see there where it, where it lands is just a couple of millimeters behind the panel line there at the, behind the uh, mouth of the intake. And the fit is all pretty good. Okay, you can see right there. Not bad. Okay, so here's the problem. <laughs> if you are an idiot like me and you don't notice the little tab, and you just sort of drop this thing on there in what you think is about the right place. Okay. No forward and aftward location feature. And you're kind of thinking, wow, Ming, that's an engineering fail. But it'll go on there, and it'll go on there just about good enough to make you think, well, you know, it's not the best fit. Kind of a lousy fit, actually, but hey, you know, these kind of things can happen. You know, and if you're a super duper idiot like me, you'll go ahead and think, oh, well, that is just a lousy, kind of a lousy fit. The only smart thing that you'll do after you glue it on is you'll go on Scale Modeler's critique group and you'll say, hey, dudes, anybody else have trouble with the Atflir uh, pylon uh, being a lousy fit? Because mine sucks. And, yeah, someone will go, oh, dude, uh, it's, it's too far back. It should be a lot farther forward. Because, you know, you're looking at it like that, and you're thinking, oh, well, I'm going to have to do a little bit of, uh, you know, filler around the uh, outside of it, but that's no big deal because it has a rubber weather seal there anyway, so, okay, it is what it is. Yeah, and then somebody's going to go, no, dude, that's not where it goes. It should be way up here. And then that's when you're going to go back and look at this picture right here where they actually show you where it's supposed to be, right there next to the intake mouth. <laughs> yeah, but by then, because you're an idiot, you will have already glued the damn thing very firmly in place with Tamiya Extra Thin, and you're gonna think you're pretty fucked. Well, if you're just stubborn like me, because I mean, look, if you're gonna be stupid, you better be tough, right? you will recognize that maybe if you flood the joint, even the next morning, with more extra thin, you can soften it up to the point where you can carefully peel this off of here, which is what I did. And uh, you can see some of the remnants of all that gluing. And yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. It was pretty ugly. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, it could have been way worse uh, because fortunately I was able to remove all of the melted material and get it all sanded down. But then I had a bunch of panel line rescribing to do because you can see right in there where the glue totally just roached the uh, lower right corner of that panel line. 
and everything that kind of wraps around underneath there uh, into that concave area. Yeah, that was all totally fucked. Uh, you can see this was all pretty mangled too, but that didn't matter because that's gonna get covered up when the pylon is in its new correct position. But I had to rescribe all that because as you can see, that is what it is supposed to look like. So maybe I can flip that over. You can see the rest of it. Kind of got a wing kind of in the way. Anyway, yeah, it, it, it could have been worse. Not my worst scribing work, definitely not my best. I think it's gonna be all okay. Now, here's the other thing, all right? So, while we were all discussing the proper location of the at FLIR, um, I was like, hey, what about this triangular depression thingus right here? What the heck is that? Because it does not show up in photos. And there was some head scratching and a couple of guys were like, yeah, I don't know, maybe that's uh, uh, there uh, front, you know, that's, that's to clear the fin if you're carrying an AIM uh, 120 or a Sparrow or whatever. And yep, sure enough, I mean, that makes perfect sense because as you can see here with this AIM 120, that's not gonna go there. It needs a place for the fin to nestle, okay, all right, and the fin on this 148th scale AIM-120, obviously a lot thicker than it is in real life uh, at scale. Um, so they've given you this really deep triangular depression to clear that if you choose to put your missiles right there. But the problem is that when you look at photos, that depression is barely visible at all. It is more visible on legacy Hornets than it is on uh, Super Hornets. Um, it, it's there, it's there, but look, let me just let you, oh goodness, let's just break the model on camera. How about that? Here, I'll let you be the judge for yourself. I have 407 Hornet images, and because um, uh, it was really the, sort of quick and lazy thing to do. I took a picture, uh, a couple of pictures of pictures. Picture, a couple of pictures of a picture on my computer screen. Okay, that's the belly of a Super Hornet. And you can see this area right here. Okay, that is where we're talking about. And you can see, uh, if in that photo, it's invisible, you can't see it. If you zoom in, you can sort of start to see right there in the middle of the screen, there is a little bit of a depression right there, but it is really barely visible and certainly much less visible than this uh, triangular divot that they've molded in right there. And, you know, which of course has a panel line running through it and comes out underneath there. And I was like, well, you know, I might be able to fill that, but that's gonna be kind of a lot of work. And I was like, no way, I'm not doing that. And then oh, let's see if we can kill this fly on camera. Yes, there we go. There you go, guys. All you people who have been complaining about the flies in my videos, there you go. Hope you're satisfied. I actually managed to get one of the thousand that are in my house right now. Anyway, so yeah. Next thing I know, of course, because again, stupid, I am in the process of filling. <laughs> filling in the triangular shaped divot because somehow I've rationalized in my mind that it's only gonna be really very hard on the starboard side because on the port side, it's almost completely covered up. Well, half covered up by the aforementioned at FLIR pylon. So yeah, not so bad, especially with respect to these little molded in details that are right there that are gonna undoubtedly get really screwed up when I start sanding all that down. And you can see the case. You can see what I've got going on here. I mean, it's not horrible, um, not great, but yeah, it's a little dicey in there to, to try and work on that uh, without just really destroying the whole area. So what I did uh, is 
I put a piece of tape on here to make a dam. And then I sealed that with a little bit of black CA that I instantly hit with kicker. So that made it uh, leak proof. Then I put a little bit of orange acrylic nail powder in there. Then I wicked in a little bit of the Bob Smith Extra Thin CA. Uh, I had tape all around it to, you know, protect from the inevitable uh, spill, uh, which actually didn't happen because, of course, I had tape. You never need the tape when you've got the tape, right? Anyway, so I got it all filled in, uh, not perfectly level, obviously. So then I've come back and uh, given it a coating of my standby uh, old ALC 309 lacquer filler primer goop. And I've sanded that down and given it, I've this, I'm on my first round of, of sanding. And you can see, it looks pretty good and pretty flush right in there. Uh, at least until I put primer on it. Of course, it always looks great until you put primer on it, right? Um, and I've got a couple of more little spots I need to hit. I already went ahead and started scribing the line through it just to make sure that I don't lose it. Uh, hopefully, though, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get by without it being too much of a disaster. We'll see. Uh, but so far, I feel okay about it, and I'm about to start on the other side. But I thought it would be worth taking a minute before I work on the other side to show you guys kind of what's going on there. So anyway, I hope this was useful to anybody who's looking to build this kit. It really is a pretty good kit. Um, all of this, you know, all of this stuff um, that I've had going on with it has really, um, pretty much without exception, been uh, self-inflicted gunshot wounds and um, not any, uh, uh, you know, not any shade on on the kit itself. It's an honest, I think, 80 to 90 uh, percent kit in my opinion. The challenge with it though is, if you're happy with the 80 or 90 percent, you don't have to really do much of anything except build the thing and paint it. But as I said in my last uh, video about this, if you want to take it that extra 10 to 20 percent, it does become a bit of a challenge, it does become a bit, uh, yeah, a bit of an ass whipping and frankly, I'm about I'm about worn out. I just want to paint the damn thing.